call it a new stay home fund. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Just so just this, funny thing happened. We were muted just now <laughs> for a while. It's always happened. Sorry again, guys. But by the way, guys, uh, we'll come back. Okay, let's just going to restart this again. Uh, by the way, we are welcoming people to come back. Uh, my I've been bad. Talking it's, and I don't even remember what I said. And yeah, yeah. So uh, I was muted the whole time. Okay, guys, welcome back to another episode of Just Langa Podcast. I'm sorry you had to watch a silent movie because of my producer just now. I mean, my bad. But this is going to be a super exciting episode because we are actually zooming in on Ramadan. Yeah. Um, during a lockdown period and how you guys can actually market during this time. If you think that there's nothing to do, you're scared, then this is definitely the episode for you because who, what is, what do your consumers want? Who are these new consumers and how can you sort of pivot your services and your businesses towards this new stay home economy? This is the episode to yeah. find out. Okay. Yeah. And by Sounds the way, uh, I saw this, uh, some of the content uh, that uh, Nina and also Stephanie has been working with. I was amazed, uh, and I think for people, if you guys, if you please do share this video uh, because some of the stuff that uh, I saw yesterday was amazing stuff, uh, things that I've never thought before, uh, and it would definitely help you guys when it comes to marketing your business during the Ramadan time, right? So, uh, what um, I think let's yeah. uh, to help you guys get into the mood, yep. right? Ramadan lockdown mood, um, and, and also for this particular episode, let's have a look at um, this video. This is actually by ADA, yeah, yeah. So, I'm gonna repeat that again. Uh, let's play the video now. We are on. Okay. Make sure I have sound now. Yeah, you do. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay guys. So, welcome back to another episode of Just Langa Podcast. Now, for the first time in centuries, we are experiencing a pandemic of global proportion that has brought the entire world down to a standstill. So, with that said, it's no surprise that Ramadan 2020 will be like no other. So, that's what today's episode about in Just Langa Podcast. We are looking at marketing in times of Ramadan with the uh, with the added unprecedented impact of a lockdown. Can brands actually take advantage during this time or will it mean the end for them? So morbid, right? Yeah, yeah. Very morbid. Intro video. <laughs> okay, intro video coming up. And stay tuned, guys. Uh, we have a lot of good stuff coming in, okay? Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Nina and I'm, this is... I'm in. 
and welcome to Popcorn's Just Langa podcast. Today we're talking about Ramadan and MCO berpisah tiada. Yeah. Um, we've decided to localize the content and we're looking at marketing in times of Ramadan and lockdown period. Is this a time of opportunity or adversity and whether you guys can make the most of it or not. And for that, I'd like to introduce you to our speaker, mm-hmm. Stephanie Conta, who's the head of marketing of ADA, which is part of the Asiata Group. She's also Malaysia's Chief Marketing Officer Awards 2018 winner for Best B2B Marketing Goal. Now, today, Stephanie is part of the leadership team in Asiata's ADA, which is the largest digital advertising and big data analytics provider in the region. Now, Stephanie drives branding, lead generation, and prospecting. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Stephanie Conter. Yay! Okay. Welcome, Stephanie. Hi. Uh, thanks. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for joining us and also, for, uh, you know, so last minute because we kind of only asked you on Monday, right? <laughs> <laughs> Got to be agile in these times. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Okay, so before we go into the questions, um, this is for the viewers out there. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask our speakers in the comment section below and we'll do our best to answer it, okay? All right, so first things first, Stephanie, can you share a little bit about ADA, what it does and what your role is? Sure. So thanks, Nina. I hit marketing at ADA, which is the company that has close to 40,000 followers on LinkedIn, but that none of you have ever heard of, right? Um, And why is it that most people haven't heard of us? Uh, That's because we work with marketers and brands. Um, So if you're, you know, a regular consumer, you might not have heard of us. Um, Now, our official description is that we are a data and AI company that designs and executes integrated digital analytics and marketing solutions. And I know that's a bit of a mouthful. So sometimes I tell people we're a bit of a combination of, you know, your typical digital advertising agency, uh, plus a consultancy like Accenture or Deloitte Digital. And then you throw in a bit of a data science outfit as well. Um, We're coming up to about three years old now. And obviously as head of marketing, my role is to build brand awareness uh, for ADA in the nine different countries that we're present in. So we're headquartered in KL, but we're also present in Indonesia, Philippines, Singapore, uh, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, um, Thailand, and South Korea. I hope I haven't left any out uh, of that list. And today you're gonna hear me talk a lot about data. So our tagline is analytics, data, advertising, and we even have an internal manifesto at ADA that life at ADA begins and ends with data. And we'll get into that a little bit more later as we talk more, Nina. Okay, no worries. Now, for you guys watching this set of data, I know probably a lot of you think it's going to be boring, but I promise you it's not. And this is where data gets really exciting, or as my teacher used to say, it's exciting. Okay, can you believe it? A convent school teacher. Okay, um, so um, who would be your clients in terms of businesses and brands? Uh, they would be using your data to target their marketing, right? And with the, uh, so what kind of brands and businesses uh, do you work with? I mean, if you can share with us. And with the MCO, have you guys had to sort of adapt to the new normal for your clients? And if so, how? Yeah, definitely. So we work with a lot of, you know, FMCG brands, consumer goods brands, uh, banks, insurance companies, telcos, um, travel. Um, and if you go to our website, um, you'll see there's a long list um, of different companies there. Um, clearly, you know, our clients were affected by this and because they're affected, we're affected too. And one of the first things we did was, you know, we really got together the leadership team and said, okay, what do we do now? Um, let's quickly reach out to our customers and see how they're doing and how we can help. And as we were talking to our customers, we realized that many businesses and brands were kind of in limbo, right? They're not sure about how to handle this, which is a once in a lifetime kind of global pandemic. Uh, and that's when it struck us that actually there's a lot that we can do to help um, not just our existing customers, but many other brands and marketers out there. So one of the first things we did was we actually built a microsite. Um, it's called the COVID-19 Survival Guide for Brands. And if you go to our website, uh, ada-asia.com, you'll find that. And we've been doing a lot on COVID-19 since January this year, actually. Blog pieces, reports, news articles on how brands can adjust um, to the changing times. And then we realized that we could do more than just a microsite. We started rolling out a regular series of webinars. I know everyone's like, maybe there's a bit of a webinar fatigue. Um, 
Uh, but we've been doing them. We had our third one yesterday, which is focused on Indonesia specifically. And each webinar, what we're trying to do is deliver something that you don't already know. So we're not going to tell you about stuff that you can read about in the news. You know, what we're trying to deliver to you is new information about consumers and how they've changed their behaviors and what that means for you as a business. Um, and, and finally, we've actually also introduced a few new services to tackle very specific issues um, that brands are dealing with. You know, for example, how do I create new content when I have so many physical limitations? I can't go out and do a video shoot, for example. And, you know, I'm very worried with, um, my shrink, you know, I, I don't want to spend my budget right now. Um, what can I do to get new clients and new business in? So we created an outcome-based model for people who are worried about spending their dollars with no outcomes. Um, right. Okay. Some things that we've done. Wow, that's a lot. Okay. Yeah. Um, so let's go back to one of the first things that got me um, uh, attracted to you. I mean, from a business point of view. Um, <laughs> you mean how my looks? <laughs> yeah. Okay. That sounds so wrong, Nina. <laughs> hey, we appreciate beauty. So that helps as well. Yeah. Okay. So you guys actually came out with, uh, when MTO happened, I realized that you guys came out with new customer personas, right? Could you share a little bit about these personas? Yeah, sure. So I said at the start, we're going to talk a lot about data. And because one of the cornerstones of ADA is the amount of data we have. So we've invested into acquiring many sources of data through various ad exchanges and other sources. Uh, on top of that, we've also invested into the technology and the people um, who can turn that data into actionable insights and solutions for brands. Uh, so I, I've got a big group of colleagues who are industry experts, data scientists, you know, AI people uh, who do some amazing stuff. So you you actually hire a bunch of data geeks. Yeah, we That's, have a whole bunch of. Um, it's yeah. so cool. Yeah. <laughs> actually, most of them are a little bit geekish. Like you know, I have such an interest in it. I may not be a data science expert, but it's just amazing, right? What they can do with the data. Mm -hmm. um, so currently, what we do is we actually track over four hundred thousand apps. Uh, we also look at one million points of interest. We look at people's consumption, uh, content consumption patterns. Uh, we look at how uh, social media sentiment is. So we use all these different data points and we've been able to model about 40 million individual consumer profiles in Malaysia. Wow. Yeah. Now the thing is when you have a lot of data, you know, sometimes you can actually suffer from analysis paralysis. Have you heard that term? Oh, yeah. yes. Okay. Yeah, right? I mean, there's literally so many different things that we can track, you know. Um, at the early stages of the COVID-19 outbreak, we were looking at things like, how is it impacting foot traffic to malls and airports? Um, but obviously now, there's no foot traffic at all, right? So we've had to move um, uh, what, what we look at. Um, and uh, my, one of my colleagues actually had a brainwave. He said, what would brands find the most helpful right now? Perhaps if we look at how consumers have changed their, not just their physical, but their digital behaviors. And if we can bucket them into these personas that brands can quickly take and act on. Uh, and that's how the consumer, the, the crisis personas were born. Um, do we have them up? Are you showing yeah. us? Yeah, it's up. It's up. Actually, Amin has been showing it for the longest time. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. tell you when to show, okay, Amin? <laughs> yeah. No, your face is still there, guys. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so just, yeah. yeah, so we call these our crisis personas. And so this is how we found, you know, Malaysians have changed um, their digital behaviors, uh, their physical and digital behaviors during COVID-19. Um, there's quite a few here. Some of the ones that I find really interesting that I personally, you know, identify with will be something like the social citizen. So this is someone who's really interested in what's happening. You know, they're on, reading more and more news sources. They're looking at social networks and trying to share information with their friends and their networks. Um, and I, I think I'm a social citizen. I've been really like into like what's the latest development, how many cases, you know, what's it going to mean for us? Um, yeah, that's one example of a persona that has popped up. Another one that I thought was quite interesting is the sad and confused. So it's a very real thing, right? Some people actually during this um, period kind of just move away from digital, you know? So they're like okay. detached. They're probably going through a bit of a downtime. They're grappling with, you know, being stuck at home and, you know, worried about maybe jobs. I don't know. Uh, so there is a really a group of people that we call the sad and confused. And what is it that brands can do to reach out these, uh, to these people? Mm -hmm. I guess we can talk about that later. Okay, okay. So you've got like nine personas here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and all of them are Malaysians. I mean, or is it like Southeast Asia? 
Um, so these personas um, are actually applicable across Southeast Asia. Okay. Uh, we found that you know they're more or less present in all the different uh, countries. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we you will find is a different sort of count of these yeah. personas, right? So in Malaysia, we've got a total of forty million profiles. I don't remember off the top of my head uh, how many are the social citizen, how many are adaptive shoppers, but there's a different count. Okay. okay. All right. Did, and and uh, knowing yeah. which one you're serving actually helps. So the next question I would actually ask is, uh, before that, uh, because I've seen the deck, Stephanie, and it can really go into detail, like how many percent of the population, how many hundred thousands are market observer, you know, the home fitness freak. Uh, can our viewers uh, get this deck somewhere? Where can they mm. get this information? Is it available online? Yeah, actually, so like I said, one of the things we do is we like to share a lot of information because that's how we can help people. Um, so yeah, if you go to our website, ada-asia.com, um, you'll be able to find it. I also shared a link which is specific to the crisis personas. Do you guys have that? Yeah, we will put it in the comment section later. Yeah. Yeah. And so they can just, you know, go and read up about it and find those personas. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Okay, how does this data and these new COVID-19 crisis persona actually help businesses and what can they do? Yeah. So I think today, you know, especially in this age of digital um, and consumers are increasingly sophisticated, you know, we have very high expectations, right? We expect messaging to be personalized. So the principles of marketing have changed quite a bit. Uh, you have to be able to reach the right people with the right message at the right time, right? I think a lot of us have heard that in this age of digital. So when we have these personas, you can really understand how have your consumers or your potential consumers, how have they changed, right? And if you take these profiles, it helps give you an idea of, okay, what's the sort of messaging that I want to direct to the different personas? And actually, if you if you decide to purchase these personas from us, you can actually take them, actually load them directly onto platforms like Facebook so that you can target people who fall within these buckets. Uh, and again, that gives you a much better chance of reaching the right person with the right message. You know, for example, like I said, I'm a social citizen profile, right? I'm really interested in what's the latest news out there uh, and sharing it with my friends on uh, Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, I'm constantly looking for news. But if a brand was to come and try and sell me at this period something fashion related, they'd probably be wasting their dollars on me, right? Because I'm not going right, to buy yeah. it. Yeah. Or I might even get very annoyed with them, like, why are you sending me this message? It's not what I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. uh, so, or we might go like, don't you know it's COVID-19? Are you not sensitive? Oh, are exactly, you tone deaf? Yeah. Exactly. So if you know um, what, how people are changing their behaviors and who fits which persona, then, you know, that really helps you, right? To make sure that you're spending your money in the right place and you're sending the right message out. All right, cool. Uh, so do we have any questions right now, Amin? Uh, not at this moment. Uh, people are still coming in. Uh, but from time to time, I, I will show the, the persona slides uh, again. Because yes. I think people are still coming in as we go along. Okay, yeah. so for our viewers, um, for the new ones, feel free to ask any questions in the comment section below and we'll do our best to answer it, okay? Yeah, so don't so try shy, guys. Along, <laughs> yeah, so moving along. Now, let's talk about Ramadan. Uh, before the COVID-19 era, how have... Um, I'm going to ask you this because you have all the data. Uh, before the COVID-19 era, how have people always been celebrating Ramadan and eat for that matter? Is it really like the best time for businesses and marketers for us here in Southeast Asia? Uh, would you equate that to the celebration to be our version of Christmas, for example? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, in Malaysia and places like Indonesia, Bangladesh um, and other, you know, have with, with a big Muslim population, Ramadan and Hari Raya are huge, right? Um, it's not just a religious occasion. I think it's a very cultural one as well. So it's all about family, togetherness, um, good deeds, compassion. This is a very meaningful time for Muslims. And obviously, you know, brands um, have realized that this is a time when they uh, they need to be communicating to their customers, right? Uh, we actually did a report on Ramadan trends earlier this year before COVID changed everything. And we looked back at the past two years, how do people behave? Um, one, obviously, that is increasing use of religious apps nowadays um, but okay. people in different countries use these apps at different times so in Malaysia it spikes at the start of the Ramadan period and after it starts it starts to dip they stop they, they, they lessen their use of the religious apps um, as the month goes on um, a lot of people obviously go to 
uh, visit the graves, uh, they gather for prayers and all that, and that's very uh, obvious. Um, and there's a lot of talk about, you know, how can we do good deeds and all that, um, that happens. So brands will always use this period to try and reach out to their customers, but we also realize that often they try and do it, I think, uh, the week or two before Hari Raya, and it's a very cluttered period. Or maybe they do it a few days before Raya, and it's a very cluttered period. So we would actually advise them to try and find a different time when there's less noise out there to make sure your message comes across. But all of that was pre-COVID. It's obviously going to change this time around. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so which is goes into my next question. So now that we're living in the COVID-19 era, we're just about getting used to lockdown one. And now it's lockdown plus Ramadan. Now, yeah. I don't know about you, but I get a bit anxious about around normal Ramadan, non-COVID. Eh? Because when people don't get their food, they go mental. For example, you know that incident, the Tudong lady like driving angrily and bashing their uncle's car, you know, kind of thing. So now we're talking... Uh, talking about Ramadan plus lockdown. So the question is, are Malaysians, because you have all the data, are Malaysians going to be able to handle it or are they going to lose it, you think? Yeah. So, I mean, first of all, I think Malaysians definitely can handle it. You know, you <laughs> get this. yeah, I mean, look at this. We've been in MCO for what, like five weeks now, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And we've made it this far. I just want to say congrats to everyone for making it this far, right? You never expected to be in this kind of situation. And um, it hasn't been easy, right? But we have adapted. And I personally have seen so many amazing stories of how Malaysians are, you know, banding together to help the less fortunate. People are sewing uh, PPE. Uh, you know, they're gathering funds, donations, getting food to the stranded and needy. I think Malaysians, you need to give yourselves a lot more credit. Right. Woo-hoo. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then in terms of data, I think we look, look, first of all, the data cannot predict what's going to happen. This is a totally unexpected situation. None of us have seen this in our lifetime. Right. So there's only so much we can predict. Uh, but if we look at the overall sentiment. What are people talking about in previous years during Ramadan, influencers and celebrities are very popular. You know, everyone wants to talk about them. They're looking for, uh, you know, great shows, fun stuff. But in this period, we're seeing that actually the top uh, trending influencers are actually official news sources. So in Malaysia, Astrawani, Sina Harian, those are the top of the list um, according to social listening. So I think Malaysians are going to be continuing to consume a lot of news and wondering, okay, what does this mean for me? There maybe will be slightly less of a, what's the word, a festive feeling in the air because we're all in this lockdown. Um, so that's going to change the way people celebrate uh, a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So um, I, I have to agree with you on Malaysians being amazing because um, this is completely off the cuff but i watch a lot of amazing race asia and you see that the malaysian team always come out on top and it's usually because of their mindset right yeah uh, and you can see patterns you you know which country has a lot of drama this is the <laughs> country you know which country complains a lot um, you can you can definitely see that in the team dynamics and it's repeated season after season i mean that's my point of view so uh, malaysians i think we have that adaptive go get there they don't complain they just do it and they just strive yeah. Yeah. yeah, which I think is amazing. Okay, so now that lockdown has happened, uh, are there un- any unexpected findings or trends for marketeers to take note of this Ramadan? For for example, you know, 3 a.m. shopping, you know, bundling, you know, if you have a date, yeah, you put, um, you, I don't know, you put like a date vinegar together with it, you know, gift giving, which is a compelling part of Ramadan, uh, and also, you know, time of giving to the less fortunate. Um, so do you have any trends that you can share with us? Um, wow, Nina, your guess actually is as good as mine, to be honest. Again, you know, our data cannot predict the future because it's, like I said, unprecedented times. But I think you've hit on some really good examples there. Um, the care package thing, we've already seen people do that, right? Um, and that's why we've seen things like if you remember one of our personas was the adaptive shopper, I think. Yes. So, you know how people were moving more and more to uh, online shopping uh, and to uh, marketplaces to send, you know, people care packages and buy stuff. I think you will see more and more of that. Uh, mm-hmm. In fact, I was reading an article um, yesterday by Google, I think, and they're saying, look, as people move more and more to buy stuff online during this festive period, what... Um, the e-commerce providers can do is add, you know, extra packaging, a little note uh, that the gift giver can personalize. 
to make it extra, you know, special during this Ramadan period. So there's still things that, you know, uh, brands uh, and providers can do to make it uh, better. Okay, so it sounds like um, as brands and marketers, you need to know your customers well and what, what they would need and make them feel good during this time because, you know, everything's uncertain and they need some sort of certainty from the brands in terms of comms or services, right? Yeah, and I think, um, you know, because it's Ramadan and sure, we may not be able to celebrate it in the usual way. We not be able, may, not, may not be able to have the Ramadan bazaars and get together in each other's homes and do our prayers together, but um, people still want to feel connected, right? Yes. They still uh-huh. want to have that, you know, I think donations and doing good works very important during this period. So they're still going to want to do that. Um, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but, you can, know. Can, can, just say <laughs> Boost, do you know, are you guys familiar yes. with the e-wallet? So Boost is actually... That's also part of your company, right? Yeah, and they're yeah. all clients. So we actually yeah. help them with their marketing and advertising. So I know that they've got a whole um, lot of stuff lined up for Ramadan uh, where they're going to help people to be able to still do, do you know, donations. They've got a Boost uh, COVID-19 fund anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're going to help people um, to do virtual uh, bazaars. Uh, give to charity so they've already planned all of this and I'm sure Boost you know is not the only one there are many other providers out there who are thinking about how can we help people to still do the stuff that they want to do even though it's in a different in some more virtual um, environment. Um, To add to you um, actually Grab as well as Food Panda is bringing all these um, Ramadan bazaars uh, vendors onto their platform so that you can still have you know your I am pretty (laughs) <laughs> yeah. I thought there was another good story. Um, you know, Maybank has just launched Sama Sama Local. Yes. You got yeah. I thought it was a great that. initiative because what they're trying to do is they're trying to get, you know, your neighborhood, uh, your, your Pachi and Makchi who are normally selling stuff by the roadside or your favorite little uh, Kopitiam, you know, they're trying to get them uh, onto the platform so you can still order from them. So it's a means of letting them continue with their livelihoods and for us to get our favorite food still, right? Exactly, because um, I don't know if you're part of this group, which is a huge group in Malaysia. It came out during the COVID-19, basically all the horror and mishaps of people starting to cook at home <laughs> it's huge and apparently people are on it and it's become like tv oh really Non-stop. yeah it's, it's, it's quite a nightmare yeah kind of thing okay so because of what's happening is there a new persona for rama uh, for consumers during ramadan um and if there is what does this mean for brand and what can brands actually do um yeah so are you showing the slides now I'm going to show it now. Okay. okay. All right. Um, so the first thing is, I don't think it's so much a new persona. These are the personas that we've seen develop as a result of COVID-19, right? The nine okay. personas I showed earlier. But now they've also got to think about, okay, Ramadan is happening. So what does this mean, right? So I think um, if we're on the first slide now, uh, what I want to remind marketers and brands out there first is that your consumers haven't disappeared. Okay, they're still there, um, that they've just changed their habits. And you need to understand, you know, what are these new habits, what, they, what are their new needs, what are their desires in order to reach them. Uh, as I said before, one thing's for sure, uh, the spirit of Ramadan will still be strong, right? Um, so togetherness, even though it's virtual, will be important, giving, family, good deeds, food. Um, one of the trends that we notice is that um, people are searching more and more for how to cook uh, recipes at home, right? And yeah. Nina, we were talking earlier about how one of the most searched things is how to lose weight. So yes. maybe they'll combine that with, you know, healthy Ramadan recipes. I don't know. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Persona that, yeah, is... Especially for the, what, the healthy... Yeah, the health the, night. Yeah, yeah the health night, right? So there are people who are healthy and going through this period. So maybe they'll be looking for great tasting food that's healthy. Um, so that's the first thing to know. Your consumers are still there. Now, if we go to the second slide... Um, what you can do as a business, look at the insights from the data. Either, you know, you can look at our per- personas, but if you have your own data, that's even better. Uh, look at the insights that are coming out of the data, you know, how are your consumers changing, and see if there's a gap there that you can fulfill. We were talking just now about the, maybe the healthy recipes for the health nut. Um, then there must be other things out there, you know. Uh, perhaps some people want their mom's favorite dish, and maybe mom is in kampong, you can't buy the kampong, so you might want your mom's favorite dish. You might see people, um, you know, looking for brands that can actually deliver uh, home cook style um, food to you. 
Uh, we talked just now about charitable platforms like Boost has a Tabong, Maybank has launched their Sama Sama Local. Um, and I also think, you know, again, going back to there's that one persona called the sad and confused. Uh, even more so during Ramadan, these people might feel even more lonely, right? If you can't be with friends and family. Um, so what can brands do for them? I'm waiting for the brand that's going to start, I don't know, recreating a home gathering for them or surprise these people with, say, you know, a call from their favorite celebrity or something. I can just see brands starting to do that. And I think it really help, um, you know, someone who's a bit sad and depressed and lonely during this time. Okay. Is that a huge persona? I mean, in Malaysia, is that a huge market? Would you say the sad and lonely? I mean, if you don't. Uh, if I remember correctly, there were probably about forty to 50,000 of these people. 40 wow. to 50,000, that's um, a lot. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, it's not a huge percentage of the overall personas, but it's still a significant number, right? Yeah. Um, okay. So don't, don't leave them in the dark. And, and I found it really interesting in your example here in the second slide that uh, KFC actually now appeals to the home cooks. That's amazing. Yeah. So, the, you know, brands are really trying to reinvent themselves and trying to see, like, how can we still help the consumers out there, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, basically, it's about finding out and, and filling the gap. Yes. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, uh, I, Steph, uh, can I ask a question? Wait, yeah, sure. I yeah, haven't okay, gone to the third slide, right, about no, communicating. No, we have not gone there yet. We have not gone okay. there yet. Uh, so the, the, question question is, the question is the yeah. question is this. Uh, I know you may not have the percentage, but if there is a the top uh, the the biggest one out of all this persona, what would that be? Ooh. Actually we do have the numbers. Mm -hmm. Uh I just can't remember them off the top of my head because we've got nine personas and we've got five different countries that we're looking at. Yeah. Uh, um, so if you go uh, to our website, like I said, the personas are there, then you can look and see which one has the biggest reach. Uh, ah. in terms of first. Yeah. So I'm going to put yeah. the website again again? Yeah, <laughs> go to the website. And the other thing I would say is, it doesn't mean that one person is one persona. You know what I mean? Ah, you could be, okay. You could be multiple personas, right? Like yeah, I, I keep forgetting. I keep putting people in. Okay, you are either one of the nine. You can't be both. You yeah, know? no. Yeah. Right? I, I'm a social citizen. I'm a working from home. I'm the what work person who's working from home. Um, I'm yeah. also, you know, sometimes I'm a health nut as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah, there will be multiple personalities. And so there are multiple messages that would appeal to someone like me. I okay, see. got it. So it's important to know that uh, people overlap as well. They're not just in one complete bucket. Humans are very complex, you know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So let's go to the third slide because okay. that one's about communicating, right? Hold yeah. On. Okay. So the third slide, um, this is really important. And it's not just for Ramadan. It's actually during this whole COVID-19 period is don't leave your customers in the dark at any time. Um, and, you know, Many people have been asking us, you know, should I just stay quiet during this period? If my service is not related to COVID-19 at all, should I just keep quiet and not say anything? And if people aren't going to spend money, I shouldn't be putting money in advertising and marketing. So people have been asking us these questions. And we said, like, no, just like a good friend, you can't abandon your consumers, uh, especially during this time when they need you. Um, and there have been multiple studies. There's a study by, by the global PR firm Edelman, mm -hmm. which they released, I think, just last month. And they do this study every year on consumer trust. So they released it last month and it showed that many consumers are still expecting brands to play a role during this period. But they want brands, obviously, to be responsible citizens, uh, to hear them out and to be there for, their, for them, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think... Being present during this period is very important. And don't forget, it's also brand building. Uh, there's another very important study by these two gentlemen called Les Binet and Peter Field. So they're very renowned uh, researchers in the space of marketing and advertising. And they did um, a long study over several years. And it shows that brands that invest in brand building activities, actually, the brand building activities have a very long-term effect. So it will drive sales over six months or more. Um, but many of us, you know, and I'm guilty of this too, I get very caught up in lead generation and demand generation, right? We can see like the leads coming in and people clicking on your ad and coming to your website. You get very caught up in all that because it's immediate, right? And you see the result. But don't forget that brand building is really important. It will last you for the long term, especially if you're trying to build a business that's sustainable. Right. Okay. So basically, it's important to communicate or 
over communicate if you have to. Yes. yes. I mean, okay. I believe you have a question on this. Yeah. Um, now. Do we have the slide? Yeah, I'm putting the slide. Over communicate. I'm putting it up. Uh, okay. Now, I I I'm, I was quite interested to know a little bit more because when it comes to over communicating. In the last few weeks, uh, since this whole COVID-19, uh, even for me personally and for us in Popcorn, we thought that we we're going to go into webinars and then we start to realize that other people are also over-communicating. Yeah. Right? So how, how do we actually stand out with everyone that seems to know that, okay, you know what, this is the time for us to over-communicate everything. Uh -huh. yeah. I think that's, oh, that's an excellent question. And yeah. hey, guess what, ADA, we're doing webinars too. <laughs> <laughs> So my friend sent me a me meme, death by webinars in the COVID-19 era. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think we're getting tired out? of it too, right? Yeah, so, yeah. that's a, such a good question. I mean, and I, I saw a recent video by this YouTuber, a very well-known YouTuber, and he pulled together all the ads that brands around the world have put up since COVID-19. Yeah. And wow. he's all the same. You know, everything's about, oh, you know, sad music and how we're all in this together. And it just becomes very monotonous after a while. I think... <laughs> I'm kicking my finger off. <laughs> I think we all, we all mean well, right? We're trying yeah. to do the right thing. Um, but then we all get caught up in the same, I guess, coming across as the same. Um, what will be my advice? I think it's very important, one, again, to know who your customers and potential customers are. What do they want to hear from you? Um, and what is it that you can bring to them, right? So it's your own brand and your own product or service has something that's unique, right? So you need to have that unique selling point and that needs to come across clearly. Uh, and then it wouldn't be such a struggle. Maybe your audience might be a very small group and of niche people, but that's fine. That is your audience. Uh, that's how you can cut, cut through the quarter. I don't know if this is also happening with the rest because uh, what happened is that the moment this whole over communication is happening, it, it kind of like affected the price factor of a product too. Because now everyone is going for this, they, they're cutting down prices and so on through the webinars. I, I, I don't know if it's related to what we're talking today, but what do you think about that? Are you seeing a lot of people cutting prices? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It's quite interesting. Uh, actually, can, can I just say something? A yeah. lot of, I mean, we see it in all the internet service providers or oh, COVID-19 price yeah. is yeah. lower. So a yeah. lot of services, a lot of um, things are giving like special discounts and stuff like that. Yeah. I think, look, and I think I've also seen that for a lot of uh, software as a service providers, you know, people like, I don't know, Salesforce, Tableau, Zoom, got discount. Yeah, exactly. And I think maybe, you know what, it's the right, one, it's the right thing to do because everyone, this is a global pandemic, right? Global economic crisis, people are struggling. But two, I think it's also a very smart move in the sense that, look, by giving um, new, you, you actually can attract new users who might never have thought of using you before because they thought you were too expensive or they don't need you. Um, but if they get a taste for your product or service, maybe then after this whole thing is over, they will end up using you anyway. Oh, okay. and there's this term called revenge spending. Have you guys Ooh, heard What that? is that? Tell me that's, more. Yeah, because that's in the slide. Uh, revenge spending, what is that? Does revenge. this yeah. have to do with Louis Vuitton in China? <laughs> yes. So actually, um, in China, they saw that, um, and you might have read about it in the news a couple of days ago, uh, when Wuhan opened up, wow, uh, I think Hermes, LV, Ooh, their sales shot up immensely, you know, because people have been cooped up all this while and they haven't been able to do anything and they just needed to go out there and spend some money. Um, so, you know, and I think for us, we may not be buying luxury goods, um, but, you know, maybe a lipstick for me. Uh, I don't know. A gadget for you, Nina. I don't know. Whatever floats your boat. But there will be, you know, you will have this need to spend some money and do something that just makes you feel good again. And to reward yourself. Kind yeah, of thing. reward yeah. yourself for getting through this. So I think brands need to remember that that's going to happen, right, at some point. Um, so keep yourself top of mind with your customer so that when that revenge spending is happening, they think of you. Wow. Um, I just saw a video of all these flights taking off, like one after another. So that would be my revenge spending going on a holiday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, kind of thing. Actually, I there's mean, a for that too that we're looking at now. Ooh, okay. Like, Let like me know. Yearning, yearning traveler, people like you, you're dying to travel, right? So you're still looking at holidays and fantasizing about it, looking at travel apps. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Okay. I, I, I so wonder what are, are this affected? Uh, I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the revenge spending, I think, is something that we would like to look forward to. <laughs> For I mean, what would be your revenge spending? I mean, um, yeah. traveling, though, but I don't know. 
Are you gonna, I know what uh, your wife will be spending on. Probably a new set of knives. <laughs> Because she's a knife freak, you know, and she buys all this like like uh, the ones you know different sizes that go into the jungle kind of thing. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Uh, so. he, his wife is, I think, more of a uh, macho than him. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but that's a different uh, webinar or episode. Okay. Yeah. What a name. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hang on. Do we have any questions, Abby? Uh, not at this moment. People are coming in and they are watching. They are saying hi and all that. So, so we are still okay, okay. Cool. yeah. Okay, so um, you mentioned that one thing that many brands are grappling with is how do I go about creating content, especially when physical shoots are not allowed? What can brands do? Yeah, so this was a question that we got a lot from a lot of people and especially de- leading up to Ramadan when people normally, you know, have all these amazing brand stories and ads. And amazing co- Raya video that you yeah. wait for to cry, you know, in front right, of the laptop. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be different, right, this time. So we actually have three things that we would propose to you guys. The first one is think about repurposing your content. So you can remake your brand story, right? Take the existing one, but just weave in maybe new stock footage, scenes, motion graphics, and you can repurpose it, right? Or remake it into something new. So that's one. Um, The other thing is editing. Um, So you might have long form content from before, which you can actually edit and cut down into shorter pieces. And if you know the data about your consumers and the different personas out there, you can take the shorter pieces and target them to the relevant people. Right. right. Okay. Um, and the third thing is, you know, just as we say, don't go dark. Hygiene content is very important. You need to be putting out content there um, on a regular basis. Right. Uh, and again, you can use today, you know, with all the technology out there, video editing software, stock footage and all that. You can do wonders, right, to create. Yeah pieces it could be on how to videos did you know videos um trends videos um those can be done today yeah it's, it's I, something that you and me can do for us at popcorn there's just so many opportunities you could actually make like a whole new movie from all your previous ads as well for us oh and grab just uh, released their ramadan did you guys see the grab yeah ad? we haven't seen that one how does it look like go oh, look for it so they released it for malaysia and indonesia as a ramadan ad um, and it's totally shot indoors at their own homes. Oh, wow. And Amy from Search is the star of the Malaysian video. Wow, so basically, okay. you know, they, because it's from Search, I thought it was so smart to say, okay, this guy is searching for different things during Ramadan. And how does he do it? He got, yes. right? He got to yeah. go out, he uses Grab. Um, but they did it all in-house with their own props, their own people made props and stuff. It's a very interesting story. Okay, cool. Sounds really good. Okay, yeah. um, this is probably the last question. Hey, actually, we thing. have a question. We have a oh, question. Oh, we do? Uh, yeah, so Safwan Sadiq. Uh, Sadiq is, okay, I'm just going to oh, put it up. Oh, from MyNef, right? Yeah, so he asks, what are some of the content trends that are coming about because of the pandemic? Hmm, that's interesting. Do you have a data for that? Um, yeah, I think, well, we looked at content trends in Jan, Feb timeframe to see what are people looking at. Uh, So that piece is available on our website under our blog. Um, So we were looking at video content, actually. And uh, I think I remember, it's a while ago now, I've done so much COVID stuff since then. Uh, (laughs) If you recall correctly, I think, again, people were looking for uh, fun stuff at that time actually they want the entertainment so they didn't want like very doom doom and gloom kind of content they're looking for stuff that is educational but fun mm-hmm. um, they didn't want to hear at that time from official sources but they there was there's this very famous doctor um, maybe he's quite good looking as well I think <laughs> <laughs> the extra doctor, is it? Yeah, maybe him. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. He caught me in Shui Lakuan. <laughs> yeah, correct. But so they were really interested in hearing uh, his advice. And I think it's also not just that he was good looking, but they felt they could relate because he was just a regular person. And he's a doctor, but he's a regular person, not an official spokesperson. Um, so you can go back. I, I Sorry, I can't remember all the details right now. I've done so much on COVID-19 since then. But you can go back to our blog and check it out in terms of uh, what content people were looking at in, for video. Yeah. Um, and if you're interested, I'm... You know, we have the tools. Um, come and talk to us. We can find out what people are yeah. looking okay. at. I, I, um, I'm also curious when, when it comes to these findings. Oh yeah, um, does the is there a drastic change on a weekly basis, or or do, do you see a trend in terms of the changes in terms of patterns? Yeah, I think we so like 
um, we've been monitoring trends for COVID since January, right? Yeah. And there has been so much change all the time, simply because, again, the actions that the governments are taking in different countries, you know, um, the in severity of the situation changing, um, the restrictions and all that. Uh, even the crisis personas that we shared, I think we are seeing more new ones pop up and we can continue to develop those as uh, things change uh, and, you know, things like Ramadan come up. After that will be Hari Raya and then um, maybe people's business start opening up, kids go back to school. There's a lot of stuff that will change. Okay. Um, so in terms of working with you guys, like how fast do you, can you guys like generate a new persona or something? Is it what you're saying? Ooh. So I don't want to get my data science colleagues into trouble here. <laughs> you can give extra rubber time, you know, Malaysia? Yeah, the ones that go to all hard work. I think it really depends. So there are some which are ready. You know, they're there. We're constantly monitoring and looking and improving them. Um, but then if you're, say, from a different industry that we don't normally work with or we haven't worked with before, then that might take a little bit more time. I would say, I think, from anywhere from days to a few weeks. Maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah, days to a few weeks because you're you're generating the data. I mean, not generating, but harvesting it. I don't know what the right word is. <laughs> Building models and uh -huh. yeah, looking at the trends and all that. Yeah. Yeah. So if you didn't do very well in statistics, then <laughs> you would have used this. Yeah, but what what I like about the website is that it helps to lessen the burden of looking for information because everything is there, right? For I think for for people like us, I think. Yeah, I mean, that was, yeah, that's part of my, one, one of the things I wanted to do for ADA was like, how can we put out valuable info because we know people need it? Yeah. I mean, we have to hide it, you know, and keep it to ourselves, right? So. Yeah, I, I, I put on a personal note, um, when I was looking at your website and I, I can apply it in so many ways, even for trainings, right? Very targeted cool. trainings for specific group of people. Uh, if I want to do like certain products and all that, I can just look into the profile itself, and there's so many things we can do from it. Right? I'm just okay. amazed uh, that Thanks. my job has been cut up to half. <laughs> so it's done. Thanks. Glad you find it useful. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is a personal question. I mean, your opinion, basically. Do you think that Ramadan lockdown 2020, while still practicing social distancing, of course, uh, can it still be festive? If so, how? And is there a place for brands? in this con conversation? Hmm. Very good question. So, I mean, I think it's obvious from my name, I'm not Muslim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my sister, her family are, you know, my I have a cousin and her family, they're Muslim. So I get to enjoy all the nice bits, you know, I get to eat the yummy food and uh, dress up once in a while. Um, but, so I'm just going to try and answer from a data-driven perspective. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess if we look at um, the trends, you know, there is, I think we kind of talked about this before, that, you know, people are going to be still a little bit worried. Um, I think even if, say, MCO is lifted end of this month and they say you can go back to your hometowns and you can, you know, gather, I think people will still, there will be some people who will still take this very carefully. They are going to want to have social distancing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I know personally, if you tell me MCO is lifted and I can go back and eat at a restaurant, I probably wouldn't or I would choose very carefully. Um, so looking at the data, we know that people's behaviors have changed and they were changing even before the MCO. Even before the MCO, we were tracking, you know, footfall to offices and to airports and we could see a big slowdown already. Uh, so this will continue during uh, Ramadan. Um, uh, but people, like I said, they still want, you know, some of the Ramadan spirit, right? Uh, so do. Brent, yeah. You don't, I mean, you don't want to focus on COVID-19. So right. down in the depressing. Ugh, you know. yeah, it's, yeah. it's a whole month, right? Where you're going to be fasting and it's not going to be easy. Mm. How are you going to fast at home um, when you're at home all the time? Well, that's not going to be easy. But so I think with the brands that can do something to make it easier, uh, lighten the day or, you know, like I said, I'm waiting for the brand that, you know, reaches out to surprise the person who is sad and confused with a, call from their favorite celebrity or send them a gift package, you know. Um, I'm waiting to see the brands that do that. I'm sure there will be some that do that. Okay, cool. So, it, it can still be festive, right? Okay. So, do we have any more questions, Amin? Uh, that's it for now. Okay, yeah. cool. So, what we'll do is we'll go into a rapid fire round of questions. I'm going to be asking you a series of questions and you need to answer them like super quick and straight to the point. Can you do this, Stephanie? Are you ready? I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
So now, in order to prepare for Ramadan, what's the most important trend that brands and businesses need to take note of? Um, the first one is, we talked about this a lot, your consumer's behavior has changed whether you like it or not. So, you know, go recognize that. Um, secondly, there's a joke going around about, you know, I don't know if you guys have seen this, it's sort of a meme. Who has accelerated digital transformation in your company? And it's COVID-19, COVID right? Exactly. If there are any businesses that are still wondering, should I go digital? Or you have a boss who's like, yeah, I'm not sure about digital. I don't think that's a question anymore. You have to go digital uh, and you have to invest and you have to change your behavior and upskill if you're not ready. Um, and finally, your competition is changing. They're thinking about what they can do to be relevant during Ramadan. So you still have a month left. Um, it's not too late. Okay, thank you. Very good and straight to the point. Okay, what are the worst things businesses can do now, uh, can do for Ramadan right now? Worst um, things. Worst thing, worst thing is yeah. to just go dark or just stay silent. Uh, and we talked about that earlier. Um, now's not the time to disappear on your consumer and lay low and be quiet. You still need to be out there communicating, sharing content, um, finding ways to reach out to your consumer so that when things improve and that revenge spending happens, you're top of mind. Okay, got it. Um, have you heard of any bad recommendations or advice you hear being giving out, uh, given out to businesses or brands during this time? We were talking about this earlier, right? And I'm not sure if I've really seen any bad advice because people, I mean, people don't really know what to do, right? So everyone's just trying their best. But um, there was one example, uh, Lululemon, which is, you know, very well known, uh, I think yoga attire. Very expensive uh, one. Very expensive. Very mm -hmm. uh, so it turns out that their creative director, they, and they've now fired him, he had designed this t-shirt uh, that talked about bat fried rice because, you know, people are talking about how bats in Wuhan started. The, oh, wow. Yeah, that's just not nice, you know. Um, you're that's, just, that's you, insensitive as well, right? insensitive and I think it's not the right thing to do for a, such a big brand right you know how yeah. can you feed on this unhealthy kind of discrimination um, to make money mm, not mm. good so I guess they got really bad lashings for that I've seen some bad stuff on social media yeah and the guy got fired so oh okay that's extreme okay so what are some do's uh, for brands that they can do now to ace this upcoming Ramadan um so I'm all about data at ADA, we're all about data. So the first thing I say, lean into the data to really try and understand your consumers, um, whether it's through your own data, second party data, third party data. You need to lean into the data, get used to it. Um, secondly, we talked about this before, don't go dark. Uh, your consumers are still there, they're just changing and they're spending time in different apps and different places. Um, and finally, you know, we're kind of lucky in the sense that with technology, there's so much that we can still do, right? Yeah. We can create these sort of uh, virtual events. Um, you can still go out there and create great and appealing content for your consumers without starting from scratch. We covered it earlier. Um, it's just, you know, how much you want to innovate and be brave about it, I guess. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay, last but not least, this is basically um, the last question of the rapid uh, fire. If you had one advice to give brands, businesses, and marketeers out there during this out of the norm Ramadan lockdown period, what would it be? Only one. Eh? Only one. Eh? <laughs> mm, only one. <laughs> oh, that's very. Choose your battle. <laughs> um, I guess. Look, you you want to build a sustainable business, right? One that's here. Hopefully, I mean, hopefully you can survive this MCO period and continue on. So you need to build trust with your consumers that's so important um, now and for later. Uh, so start thinking already about how you're going to uh, build that trust and maintain that trust. Uh, for example, I talked about, you know, eateries or retail. Once they open up, um, they have to be able to demonstrate that they're taking steps to maintain social distance, that their staff are healthy, you know, that consumers can come and have a safe experience, right? So you start thinking now about how you're going to continue to maintain and build that trust with your consumers. Okay. I, th I think that's a really good advice because we yeah. haven't heard that from anywhere yet. Yeah? Okay. So any questions, Amin? Um, no. Uh, we can okay. move forward. Yeah. Cool. Um, right. This one is not a rapid fire, but basically it's the last questions that we're going to ask you. It's a moving forward question. Yes, Stephanie? So last but not least, moving forward, 
Singapore's Prime Minister has already announced that their lockdown is extended until 1st of June. And it looks quite possibly that, you know, we're following suit. And even once lockdown is lifted, I don't think we'll be able to socialize and function freely um, as days before COVID-19. So if anything, we'll be integrated into stages, uh, in stages uh, into our new way of living. Lives will no longer be the same. Uh, so what will this mean for businesses out there? What do they need to put in place in the long term? What can they do now or is it too late yeah no i don't think it's too late that's for sure um mm -hmm. we can still do something and we all need to prep for what happens you know post mco or in the long term um and i'm kind of tired of this term that everyone's talking about the new normal right mm -hmm. it's so overused but i think it's at the same time it's so true right mm -hmm. it is a new normal um we are going to be very careful about social distancing and you know about um how we go back to life after this. So I talked already just now about how make sure that you know your consumers are able to trust you, demonstrate upfront how you're taking steps to uh, create a safe environment for your consumers. Um, many brands are going to be thinking, relooking their supply chains. So I was looking, I was reading up some stuff about how for many brands, you know, their supply chains or their suppliers are based, say, in a specific region uh, for cost savings purposes. And now they will realize that, look, you need to have a diverse supply chain, especially um, with how the pandemic has affected suppliers and all that. Many brands are going to be thinking about how they can build sustainable long term business strategies. Um, and even businesses like ADAs, you know, we're very data driven and digital, but at the same time, we are very heavy touch because we see clients or potential clients face to face all the time. We're so reliant on it. And now we realize that that's not going to happen. We have to go digital. We have to make um, those transactions happen online. So I think for all of you, one thing that you can personally do is start building your brand and your network online. Um, it, you better build that brand for yourself and don't let someone else, you know, take that space. Okay. All right, cool. Thank you so much, Stephanie. That's amazing. Yeah. So um, I'm afraid that's all the time we have for today. Yep. But if I were to summarize today's episode, what I'm getting at is it's not the end of the world. People may be stuck at home. Your consumers have not disappeared. They are still there. In fact, they are adaptive. They're seeking out online substitutes so you can still be part of this new world's narrative. And you can use data to drive your marketing strategies to capture this new stay-at-home consumer. You can also use the insights to identify gaps um, towards these new customers uh, because you can pivot your business to help fill the gap like you know KFC appeal to home cooks, Lazada for fresh vegetable delivery, who would have thought that um, and this helps you to stay lever relevant <laughs> uh, during this period and uh, I guess use social media more over communicate if you have to so that you can get the message um, I, I think it's better to over communicate than not communicate at all right yeah so in short for businesses there's so many things that you can do uh, that you're thinking about your customers during this important period and that you're making the necessary adjustments to provide them with a more convenient and delightful journey especially during Ramadan right yeah so please everybody give a big hand and applause to Stephanie thank you so much <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. Stay safe. Stay safe. Yeah, stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, th thanks a lot. I learned a lot today. Yeah, so um, today was such a super insightful session. I mean, you're blue. What happened? It's I, like I, you're an avatar now. You're light. <laughs> yeah, it could be the light. Yeah, that was oh, like, whoa. We're no longer light. <laughs> you yeah. gave me and Stephanie a heart attack. Oh, my God. You know? Yeah, thanks a lot, yeah. Steph. Okay. Okay, okay. Bye. Nice Bye. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye. Okay, so moving forward, um, please give us a like and follow us on our social media. We're also going to be posting this video on YouTube, so go check it out on Popcorn Fest. Mm -hmm. um, if you guys would love more updates and see more videos like this, be sure to follow us on all our social media, Popcorn Fest, and on LinkedIn as well. And before we end, um, Amin, are you on screen with me? I am on screen with you. Uh, okay, so we do have a message for you guys out there from Team Popcorn. Yeah. Now, I know this Ramadan is different. During this time, you know, it's this period that we all are usually back at home so we can break our first fast with our parents and our loved ones but we can't and it might seem like it's all doom and gloom but it doesn't have to be that way and let's all go back to the basics and the spirit of Ramadan. Yeah and the thing is we kind of like used to have all this uh, fancy buffet and hotels and all that sometimes we pay like almost 100 bucks for it you know what this is an opportunity for you to save some money right uh, maybe perhaps you can create your own food at home cook uh 
use YouTube, find your own uh, recipe and all that, and have meals via Zoom with your friends, right? Yeah, if they are okay. like somewhere so, far away. <laughs> yeah, so if you're used to breaking fast in fancy, uh, fancy restaurants yeah. and hotels, create your own feast at home. If you're used to going out for bukas, break your fast virtually with family and friends. Yeah. And if you're used to going for taraweh prayers at the mosque... You Perf perform your own taraweh at home? Right? Yes. Maybe if you need, okay, you can't do berjemaah uh, via Zoom, but maybe you can have a Zoom application just next to you and let's do it together, yeah. right? Or you can help the imam to go virtually. This is the time yeah. when we help everybody, especially when somebody is not that digitally savvy, you could make a difference in their life. Exactly. So, um, yeah, and if you if this was the time where you overdose on all those yummy ayam purchase at your bazaar Ramadan, you can now order it via Grab or via Food Panda, so you can overdose at home. Yep. And virtually among friends mm -hmm. while they watch you overdose. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this this is definitely a once in a lifetime thing. I think, uh, and all those uh, all those things that we can actually do, uh, innovative stuff we can do, do it, guys. Okay, right. so I promise you, this will be a Ramadan like no other, and it's really up to you to have. An amazing one. Okay. So here's wishing all our Muslim fans and non-Muslim fans. Very blessed Ramadan from all yep. of us in Popcorn. We love you yeah. and thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next week, same time, same place. Yeah. Okay. Bye guys. Selamat berpuasa. Minta maaf saya batin. Right. Yeah, kosong berpuasa. kosong balik. Maybe we'll see you again after this. Uh, kosong kosong again. All right. And and we, we can start kosonging, is it? I thought it was during we can. Ramadan. During Ramadan, we can start too. Uh, it's just okay. a Okay. Minta maaf, kosong-kosong. guys. Dosa. And with that, <laughs> goodbye. Thank you. We'll see you again. Bye. <laughs> Ramadan tiba, Ramadan tiba, Ramadan tiba. Marhaban ya Ramadan, Marhaban ya Ramadan, Marhaban ya Ramadan, Marhaban ya Ramadan. Ramadan tiba semua bahagia, tua dan muda bersuka cita. Bulan ampunan, bulan yang berkah, bulan terbebas api neraka. Andaikan saja Ramadan semua Bulan yang tiba, bulan yang ada Karena besarnya setiap pahala Yang dijanjikan kepada kita